Good afternoon, my fellow handball players. Uh, welcome to Wall Ball Worldwide. Uh, today we're going to be having a tutorial on how to run a handball tournament. Uh, so, my name is uh, Angel Hernandez. I go by Handball Hernandez. I've been organizing handball tournaments since 1996, uh, 25 years in the game. Um, I started off at a real, uh, just in my neighborhood, and expanded to doing uh, pro tournaments. Um, have been involved in a lot of tournaments, not just big ball, small ball as well. Um, one wall, C wall, three wall, four wall, you name it. Um, so um, I have a lot of experience um, that I want to share with everybody. And again, we want to encourage people uh, to get involved, you know, because some of us old timers, you know, we're getting tired, man. And we want to breathe life into uh, the new generation to, c to continue carrying the torch and keep the ball going and bouncing in the right direction. So um, the reason why uh, we're wanting to do this uh, tutorial is to inspire people uh, to do tournaments who may have not ever done a tournament or maybe they're um, stagnant at one level of a tournament and want to excel or take that next step to the next level. So we want to share some of the things uh, that uh, we've had in success in doing. Um, and then just, you know, uh, just talk about the basic structures of a tournament, uh, the, the things to do, the things to watch out for and so forth. So we hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so we're going to start off first with the top five things uh, to consider uh, before planning a tournament. Okay, so um, how soon should you start planning? Well, uh, of course, you want to uh, put it on people's minds. Uh, so I would start planning maybe three, four months in advance. You know, um, it just depends on the experience you have, as well as the network that you've already established. Um, I've done tournaments spur of the moment, uh, keeping in mind that the showing is gonna be low because not a lot of people know about it or they might have made plans already. But if you're expecting a big turnout, it would be good uh, to put the word out there maybe even six months in advance. Um, this way you have time uh, to build up uh, your revenue you know, for expenses. Um, as well as uh, just to spread the word as much as possible. Uh, again, things to consider uh, is like how big do you want the tournament, you know, and what you're working with. Uh, but we'll talk about those things. So I would say six months in between there, you know, uh, for example, I'm going to be having a tournament uh, the 27th of this month, uh, you know, next weekend. And I put the word out for that about two weeks ago two, three weeks ago. But I'm really only expecting like, you know, the locals and I'm just expecting maybe some of the regional people. But the uh, thing that I think is gonna probably entice some people is that it's a free entry tournament. So of course I have a network established um, and I can put the word out pretty quick. Um, so again, if you're just starting out, you might wanna plan ahead, put it on people's minds. And the reason why you wanna do that is because uh, everyone has their annual tournaments and you don't want to step on anyone's toes. So it is good to be able to uh, talk to your fellow handball organizers, directors, um, get a feel for what their dates are. That way you don't bump heads with them. You want to give your tournament a little breathing room, maybe a week. I would say about a week minimum or two weeks is good, you know, because sometimes if a tournament is charging a higher price, to expect people to come to yours and you're charging a high price, you know, is not too reasonable. So those are things to keep in mind. Um, and then, you know, again, it's good to network and, and talk to people. That way you're not stepping on each other's toes. You want their support. You want them to support you. Um, and people catch feelings too, you know. If you say you do a tournament the week before theirs and they have their word out maybe before you, and they're going to like, hey, man, like that's kind of close to mine, you know. Or, you know, I have my annual tournament, and now all of a sudden you want the same date as me? Like, that's not cool. You're going to create uh, tension and conflict. 
So it's better to communicate and find a date that um, you can utilize, you know. So I got my cheat sheet here via my phone. Uh, my brother Jay here sent me a list of things to kind of keep us on track. Um, so, um, of course, uh, what type of tournament format should I use? Uh, example, game to 12, game to 15, 21, best two out of three, uh, one wall, three wall, C wall, four wall, and what are the pros and cons? Okay, so you got to take uh, first think about, you know, where you want to have it. You know, what do you have accessible to you? Um, that's important. Uh, if you only have one court, uh, you got to keep in mind, you know, how much time you're going to have. The time of year matters as well. Uh, so before spring, we don't have a lot of sunlight, you know, so you're probably going to, it's going to get dark around 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, especially if your courts don't have lights. And then uh, you want to be able to start early. I would say 9, 10 o'clock, 11 pushing it. You know, so um, you what you can do, you got well, you got to take that into consideration is how many courts you have available to you, uh, and then also uh, the scoring format you're going to use. You can do rally scoring. That means uh, everything counts, whether you're receiving or serving. Uh, a point is going to be awarded whoever wins that uh, rally or volley, right? Um, Typically, we'll do a traditional 12-point scoring, which is very popular in Stockton, 209 area. Uh, you have shutouts in that, 7-0, uh, 9-1. And if you tie at 11, uh, you drop down to 8. That can happen three times. After the third time, you drop to 0, uh, first to 5. And then we'll usually do a set 2 out of 3. So that's a, what we call a traditional 12-point game. Um, there is uh, 15, we'll do like first to 15, right? Uh, you could be Changa Changa 14-14, whoever gets that next point wins, you know. Um, some people like to drop down. If you tie at 14, then you drop down to 10, a 13, it, it all depends. Um, but again, you want to keep in mind what you have available to you and how much time you're going to need. Uh, some people do point on serve in Fresno they like to do point on serve uh, which is a lengthier game uh, but I mean for your money it's a good deal because you're playing a lot of game you know uh, and they'll usually do a set two out of three 15 15 and then the tiebreaker to 11 in small ball you typically have uh, games 21 21 and then tiebreaker 11 here today behind us we have a small ball three wall doubles tournament and they're doing the 15-15-11 format. So uh, again, you know, they got two courts here and they have lights. And I think the earliest game was like at nine o'clock. You're doing point on serve, which is lengthier. But again, you have lights, so they can be here all night and day. Uh, but if you don't have that luxury, you gotta keep in mind, you know, what time you have allotted. So um, that's gonna also depend on what format you choose, okay? And also, you want to keep in mind, like, if the area, like, say, for example, in Stockton, we typically do traditional 12-point games, you know, they want to, they're used to that format, so maybe stick to that format, you know. Um, you got to also think about the rules, too. Like, some people do uh, line is good, line is not good. And you kind of want to stick to the house rules, you know, um, just to avoid any conflicts or any frustrations or anything like that things to keep in mind uh, but again it's up to you it's your tournament and, and you got to stick stand to your you know stick to your guns stand your ground you know and run it how you want to run it of course you're going to get uh, feedback uh, some is going to be constructive and some is going to be negative but either way you just take it in process it uh, and then learn from it okay so um, the other thing uh, to keep in mind is like say you don't know how to gauge how much time what I would recommend is maybe you get a fallow player and you play the format that you're thinking about playing and you kind of time it so you can kind of see okay if we're kind of evenly matched how long is that going to take us you know it could take 15 minutes a game if there's timeouts I would say a traditional 12 it can be done again the shutouts it can be done five ten minutes you know, if it's it's a long game and they're tying, you know, at 
at 11 and they're dropping down, that game could take 20, almost 30 minutes. You know, uh, a set, maybe 45 to an hour, it depends. So that's a way of gauging um, is going out there and actually trying it yourself, play the format you're thinking about, and then you can kind of evaluate, uh, you know, where you're at with that, okay?